Gentlemen, welcome. Dr. Brown, uh, last Thursday night we had uh, the president yelling at us for an hour, sounding like it was 1941. Um, with threats to democracy around the world. Uh, yesterday we got his budget, seemed more like Harry Truman in the 1940s or Bill Clinton in 1993, uh, drawing down our military after the wars. It only had a 1% increase in defense spending compared to last year's request. Given continued high inflation, uh, that amounts to a real cut. China recently announced that it was gonna increase its defense budget by 7.2%. Uh, do you think the president's budget request accurately uh, address ac accurately and soundly addresses the severity of the threats that we face today? No, I worry both about the top line and then from, from what I can tell from a quick skim of, of the budget submission, uh, particularly what it'll mean for procurement uh, in the coming years where I think we're looking at uh, an absolute cut, which would be even in, in relative inflation adjusted terms more severe still. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about the specific concerns you have on procurement going forward in the future? Well, uh, one of the major challenges we face at this point is generating uh, and procuring the number of munitions we would need for particular contingencies, uh, as well as simply some of the platforms that would be used to, to deliver them. Uh, and so it is you know, helpful to have investment in R&D uh, and modernization and things that look forward to in the future, but, but you're not going to be able to get there unless you have the money to actually buy things once they become available. And moreover, procurement spending at this point provides a double benefit because the only way you can really strengthen the defense industrial base is by providing guarantees that money to buy things will actually be there. If you're looking for firms to expand or um, ramp up new production lines, invest in a new workforce, that's the sort of money you need to be spending now that would make possible further investments down the road. Mm -hmm. The kind of multi-year procurement authority that some in Congress have resisted? Yeah, I think that's going to be critical. Yeah. Uh, it's because you can't expect those companies, or more to the point, the company's owners in the form of their shareholders to lay out significant capital up front if they don't have a confidence of a return down the road? If the business case is there, then they'll make the investments. But for the business case to be there, they have to be persuaded that this isn't just a one-year bump in, say, procurement of 155 millimeter artillery ammunition or whatever the capability is, because otherwise they can't justify all the new investments that would be necessary to get to that point. Um, Dr. Shaw, you're nodding your head. Do you agree? have anything to add to that? I do, and I guess I'd add, Senator, that you know, we've heard from lots of experts in government, outside of government, Dr. Brands, of course, has written extensively on this, that we're entering this, this uh, dangerous window at the end of the decade with China. It seems to me that if we believed that, we would be putting our defense department, our defense industry on a wartime footing. We would be expanding capacity, we'd be increasing uh, our defense industrial base capacity, building our munition stockpiles, building our ability to surge. We have a few years of critical warning now, and we need to seize that opportunity, or I think there's a very real risk that we look back on this moment and realize that we missed the opportunity to be ready. Yeah, so, so you make those outlays now to try to, uh, and you wanna ensure companies they'll get a reasonable rate of return on their investments now. Um, is there is any reason to think the world's gonna be safer in three or five or 10 years than it is now, and we won't need all that stuff we're investing in? Dr. Brands, you wanna take that? No, there, there's no reason to believe that. We're going to be dealing with a hyper-revisionist and perhaps hyper-mobilized Russia for some time to come. We're going to be dealing with a China whose military buildup continues at a very alarming rate. We're going to be dealing with a North Korea uh, whose nuclear arsenal is and missile arsenal is going to outpace U.S. missile defenses at some point uh, this decade, as well as all the challenges in Iran and from terrorist groups. So no, there's no reason to think the threat environment will become less severe. Dr. Shar. I might just add that the, the best thing that we can do to buy down the risk of a conflict with China is to make investments now that increase deterrence. So it's, it's always costly, uh, investment of resources and national effort to, be, to, per, to preserve the peace, but more costly, I, pre, I presume, to win a war when the peace isn't preserved. Thank you, gentlemen.